Um, hello, thank you for joining and welcome to this web event in which we will talk about sustainable SBC solutions for medical applications, focus on medical films. My name is Christopher Schuren. I'm a market manager looking after the medical market segment within Creighton and I will be moderating this session. Just a few housekeeping items before we begin. So all participants have been muted. Please use the Q&A button on your screen to submit any questions you might have. And this session will be recorded and a copy will be available upon request. Today's session is hosted by our staff R&D scientist, Aparajita Bhattacharya. Aparajita has over eight years of experience in new polymer and solution development for medical and healthcare applications. She has a solid expertise in polymer physics and application development. As for the agenda of today's session, we will start with a brief introduction of Creighton, highlight some of the feature and benefits enabled by Creighton Solutions, share technical application data related to medical films and tubing, and at the end of the session, we will set aside 10 minutes for question and answers. So Creighton is a global leading producer of specialty chemicals. We develop, manufacture, and market styrenic block copolymers and bio-based chemicals. Headquartered in Houston, Texas, Creighton has a global manufacturing and operations footprint with over 1,900 employees. Over four, 14 manufacturing plants, seven innovation centers, and multiple regional offices enable us to deliver sustainable solutions globally. With over 30 years of experience in serving the medical market, our polymers deliver clear, soft, sterilizable and strong solutions, enabling plasticizer free and products with a potential for significant reduction of substances of concern. Our polymer solutions are geared towards the medical industry by providing a high level of product consistency, which is ensured by our manufacturing processes. Keeping in mind the requirements of the medical applications, we are very careful in selecting the raw materials and additives used in our solutions. Ensuring a continuity of supply by having multiple manufacturing locations globally. Shelf life up to five years. Having an effective change management procedure in place to allow efficient communication. And our products are tested to meet the stringent requirements for medical applications. They are compliant to the US pharmacopoeia and have been tested per FDA and ISO 10993. Also extractable and toxicology profiles are available. Our solutions can either be dry blended or compounded with polyolefins, which leads to enhanced material performance in many medical applications. In terms of the features and the corresponding benefits, our polymer solutions provide good mechanical properties in machine and transverse direction, leading to superior end product performance, improved transmittance and lower haze, providing glass-like optical properties. Phthalate and plasticizer-free formulations are possible, which improve patient safety. Maintaining good overall properties after sterilization to withstand stringent sterilization requirements. Our solutions are polyolefin based thermoplastic solutions, which leads to improved recyclability, improved film seal, seal strength, and improved film impact performance, leading to meet the key requirements of IV back applications. High level of tubing flexibility that translate into a cooked good kink resistance of tubing applications, low tubing hysteresis, enabling a consistent flow rate performance where required. One example would be peristaltic pump tubing. Some example application segments where our polymer solutions are used are medical films, medical tubing, medical stoppers, and IV bottles. Those are just some examples where our polymer solutions are being used today. In the following slides, we will further discuss two of the key segments, which are medical film and medical tubing applications. 
For this, I hand over to my colleague Aparajita, who will further discuss in more detail. Thank you, Christoph. Um, so as Christoph mentioned already uh, in this presentation, we will go into some details of how uh, Craton SEBS is used with polyolefins in different medical applications. So here we present an example of medical films where the end application is IV bags. Now a typical three layer IV bag film structure is shown here. Uh, where each layer is composed of a craton SEBS and polyolefin. In this example, we have uh, prepared films using the craton grade G1645 that was blended with polypropylene. The selection of um, homo or random copolymer polypropylene was made based on the outer, middle or the inner layer. We uh, prepared 180 micron thick films, which is the typical thickness um, in an IV bag um, film application. We studied the effect of varying the amount of G1645 in middle layer and in the inner sealing layer on the seal strength and drop dot impact resistance performance. Both the data sets, as you can see, are shown on the right. For both data sets um, that are shown, the amount of G1645 in the inner sealing layer was varied uh, from 0%, which is shown by the blue bars, to 10%, which is shown by the yellow bars, to 20%, which is shown by the green bars. Also, for both the data sets, the x axis is shown at the bottom, which represents the amount of G1645 in the middle layer which was varied from 10 to 25, 50, and finally to 75%. It can be seen that the seal strength increases as the amount of G1645 um, in the inner layer is increased. This is true, as you can see, for all the middle layer compositions studied, where the G1645 was varied from 10 to 75%. If you look at the data on drop dot impact resistance, this data was collected by dropping weights from a height of one and a half meters. Um, first, it can be seen that increasing G1645 in the ceiling layer has a positive influence on impact performance of the bags, where the impact resistance increases with increase in G1645 loading. From the graph of dart impact as a function of G1645 in the middle layer, we can see that beyond 25% addition level of G1645, the bags do not undergo breakage even when the maximum um, weight of 2.1 kg was reached. So um, a combination of these two uh, data sets show that 10 to 20% G1645 in inner layer is, uh, uh, has a significant uh, improvement on the seal strength and 25 to 50% loading of G1645 in the middle layer highly improves drop dart impact performance. Now, um, G1645 is, is our workhorse grade in medical film applications. Uh, additionally, we also recommend the use of other grades like um, G1642, G1652, G1730, the functionalized grade FG1924 in, uh, in medical films uh, for IV bag and other applications, um, which and use the use of these polymers can meet the specific requirements of those applications. In this slide, um, we have presented an example of Craton SEBS and polypropylene blends in a medical tubing application. The ratio of um, SEBS to polypropylene, uh, of course, it depends on the final tubing um, application uh, that it is being used in and can vary from 70, 30 for an IV tubing, 70% uh, G1645, 30% polypropylene to about 80-20 or even 88-12 for a tubing application like in peristaltic pump tubing. Um, in the table on the right hand side that you see, we have shown a comparison in tubing properties made with G1645 and polypropylene blended at 
three different ratios and also perform the same tests on a um, silicone tubing. It can be seen from uh, decreasing Shorey hardness that uh, the decreasing Shorey hardness as well as the modulus that increase in G1645 uh, in the blend le leads to softer um, uh, tube tubes. Uh, the tensile strength decreases slightly while ultimate elongation is well above 900 percent for all of the G1645 polypropylene compositions. The, the, the modulus and tensile strength of G1645 polypropylene blends are similar to that of the silicone tubing, as you can see um, in the column on the right hand side. Now, uh, king diameter is an important property in most uh, tubing applications. And here we can see that the apparent king diameter remains unchanged and at low values, uh, with increase in G1645 for all of the three G1645 polypropylene blends. Um, also for peristaltic pump application, for example, consistency of flow over a period of time is an important criteria. So we performed consistency tests using a peristaltic pump and the exact test conditions are as mentioned uh, below the table. We measured the flow rate at the start and at the end of an eight hour period and measured the change in flow rate. The flow rate change is small, as you can see with all G1645 polypropylene compositions as compared to the silicone tubing. And the consistency of flow improves with increase in G1645 um, in the blends. Um, apart from good kink resistance and high consistency of flow, uh, the Craton G1645 polypropylene blends also provide excellent transparency to medical tubing, um, which is also an important aspect. Again, um, similar to medical film applications, while G1645 is the most widely used craton grade in medical tubing, we also recommend the use of G1646, which can be processed at lower temperatures than 1645, and additionally G1643 grades in this application. So um, sterilizability of end products is a critical aspect in majority of medical applications. Um, the Craton SEBS polyolefin blends can be sterilized using the most commonly used techniques of um, ethylene oxide, gamma, and steam sterilization. Here we have shown data on key properties uh, for medical tubing and films before and after sterilization using all of these three methods. The specific uh, conditions for sterilization are shown here in the box on the right. Um, sterilization was done on, on plaques, uh, two millimeters thick, and also an extru extruded tubing made with G1645 PP and G1646 polypropylene blends. And we have compared to PVC because um, it is an incumbent in several medical applications. Um, so we can see that the SEBS polypropylene blends undergo much lower yellowing after gamma sterilization as compared to PVC. Um, that is one of the first things that does stand out, which and while the PVC undergoes severe discoloration after gamma sterilization. Uh, moreover, we also observe uh, good retention of other properties um, using SEBS polypropylene blends like uh, kink resistance, hardness, tensile properties, um, and bond strength after sterilization by all three processes. Finally, um, in this um, slide, we have uh, summarized in a table um, uh, the, the, along with the basic polymer properties, the Craton SEBS grades that are most commonly used in medical applications uh, for both film and tubing. Uh, the product portfolio shown here consists of uh, polymers with, as you can see, with uh, varying melt flow rates and hardnesses. Um, there is also a mix of SEBS polymers. Um, so with uh, ethylene butene uh, mid block, like uh, for example, G16, uh, of course, G1645 and 46, which we talked about uh, in the previous slides. Um, we have SEBS polymers in the form of G1657, G1643. 
Uh, then we have SEPS polymers with ethylene propylene in the mid block, for example, G1730, and also functionalized grades like FG1901 and FG1924, which provide greater compatibility with more polar polymers. So uh, depending on the polymer, it is um, available as uh, either a dense pellet or in the crumb form. And uh, this is not an exhaustive list, but, but it does provide a good starting point for making a selection uh, depending on the specific needs of your end application. So with this, we come to the end of our presentation and we would be glad to take any questions from you at this point. Um, if you have any queries um, or need product samples, um, please do not hesitate to contact us um, at the information provided uh, on the slide. Yes, Aparajita, and uh, we did indeed uh, get some questions to the Q&A session, so uh, we'll try to go through this. Just a comment from my side. If we would not get to the answer you asked through the Q&A session, make, be sure that we will follow up with you directly to provide you the answers. But so going over the list here, first question that came in. You mentioned your polymers enable higher transparency. Do you have specific details about the level of transparency that can be reached? So I don't know, Brigitte, if you can comment yes, Christoph, on. Yes, I, I, can, I can take that question. Um, so the trans, uh, our neat polymers by itself um, are, are, are water clear. Um, so cast films of uh, any of the polymers that was mentioned in the table um, will lead to a completely transparent film. Now, uh, depending on the polymer, uh, of course, it has um, a certain compatibility with polypropylene and uh, the, we can point you to the grades that are highly compatible with polypropylene uh, that gives uh, excellent transparency of the SEBS polypropylene blend. In fact, uh, in combination with polypropylene, uh, some of our grades enhances the transparency over just the neat uh, polypropylene film also. Okay, thank you. Uh, second question I have here uh, in the Q&A box is that you mentioned that your polymers can be dry blended and compounded with polyolefins. Uh, can all your polymers be dry blended for these medical applications or are there restrictions? So, Christoph, if you go back to, um, if we can show the table uh, once more, there are some uh, polymers that are in the dense pellet form, um, yeah, and some polymers that are in the crumb form. Um, the polymers that are in dense pellet form can all be dry blended with polypropylene. Uh, of course, you would have to uh, match the melt flow rate of the polypropylene and the uh, the create on uh, SEBS uh, grade that you, or SEPS grade that you are choosing. Um, so dry blending is, is, is very useful in, in extrusion of uh, medical tubing and is uh, uh, widely used in that way in the medical tubing application. Um, for the medical films, uh, of course, again, dry blending is possible, but a large number of our customers actually uh, do include a compounding step because um, they have found that compounding gives a slight, uh, slightly better results, uh, some enhancement and properties uh, over just dry blended uh, films. Okay, thank you, Aparajita. Uh, Another question anomalous came in. Is there an optimal temperature to process the G1645 at? Uh, yes, so um, the G1645 has a um, order disorder transition temperature of um, around 230 um, to 40 degrees centigrade. Um, in combination with polypropylene, it can be easily um, processed at uh, 230 degrees centigrade uh, dye temperature. Um, if you're looking for um, a, 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 polym a grade uh, that can be processed at lower temperatures, we recommend G1646 because um, G1646 can be processed at 10 to 20 degrees centigrade lower than G1645. Uh, but it retains all the key properties of G1645, like um, 
the mechanical properties, uh, the seal strength, um, uh, uh, the optical properties uh, for medical tubing. It, it has uh, the exact same kink resistance, um, uh, for example. Um, so uh, the uh, G1646 can be processed at uh, 220 um, on average, 220 degrees centigrade uh, dye temperatures, as opposed to G1645, which will require 230, 240 degrees centigrade. OK, thanks. Next question uh, is regarding regulatory testing that we've carried out. Question here is what kind of regulatory tests that we have performed on our polymers? So um, I think Christoph had uh, has uh, had mentioned before in one of his slides that um, our polymers are FDA approved and um, we also have um, um, USP and uh, ISO testing uh, done on several of our polymer grades, um, especially those that are used in medical applications. Um, and uh, depending on the grade you are interested in, uh, we can definitely provide uh, further information. And I would encourage you to contact us and we can take this discussion offline with you and see uh, what data you need and what tests are you looking for. Indeed, Aprashita. Um, there was a follow-up question from earlier on in terms of the great FG1924. If we can uh, allude to any uh, testing uh, that has been done on the FG1924, is that something that you want to follow up on in email, or can you address? Yeah, I think said? I would. I would like to follow up um, via an email uh, specifically regarding every grade. Um, okay. Yes, that makes sense. So um, this is from a person, one of the first. Uh, so we will definitely follow up with this person directly in terms of the specific question. The uh, following question is in which applications do you see concern using plasticizers as this was mentioned in one of the previous slides? Um, yeah, I'll I'll take that if that's OK for you. Yes, Christoph, so, please go ahead. Um, I must say over the past years, and this has been going on for a longer uh, period of time, we have seen uh, an increased concern uh, with the use of plasticizer in some of the medical applications. I think that trend has been become clearer and clearer over the last years. It depends on from region to region and specifically in China, there has been a strong push to move away from any plasticizer usage in medical applications and uh, also from PVC in that matter. Other regions definitely follow as well in terms of Europe and North America, but we definitely see a trend moving away from plasticizer, uh, moving away from PVC entirely into more sustainable and plasticizer free solutions in, in the medical applications. And I must say have we have also recently witnessed a demand for recyclable solutions, and this is clearly the case for medical films and the medical tubing applications that Aparajita has discussed and talked about, where we see an increased amount in terms of recyclability and how we can help. And due to the fact that our polymers or our solutions are indeed based on polyolefins, recyclability is, uh, is an easy way for us to address this. So I hope that answers that question and we will follow up again with each uh, individually. And other question that came in, how are the mechanical properties affected in IV film applications by the addition of polypropylene in the formulation? Uh, that is to... an excellent question. Um, okay. So um, addition of, um, so we do have the data on mechanical uh, properties of the films um, in both machine direction and uh, cross direction. Um, and we can share that. Um, with uh, with you if uh, if needed um, and you can just uh, send us an email again uh, and uh, we have seen that um, addition of polypropylene uh, leads to an increase in in tensile strength um, while keeping the elongations um, at uh, the same level all of them above uh, 700 uh, percent um, and we also see that uh, the film's uh, properties are are isotropic where the uh, are anisotropic where the mechanical properties are similar in both the machine direction and the transverse direction. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, question that came in here as well. Could we dry blend with polyolefins using a single screw extruder with a simple, simple throat feed? So could we dry blend, could, sorry, could we dry blend with polyolefins using a single screw extruder with a simple throat feed? That's the question. Um, I think you can uh, uh, dry blend. Uh, I mean, the feeding should be OK with a simple uh, throat feed, uh, but if you are dry blending, um, it is recommended to use twin screw extruders. OK, there is a generic question. I think we probably would need some more data, which is asked here. Can you talk about the tests performed for your products for medical use? Um, I can start up, Rajita. I think, yes, we have to perform testing carried out on uh, various application fields for medical use. We just mentioned two of which that we, in a short overview, mentioned some testing that we've carried out for medical films, medical tubing. We have, uh, since the 30 plus years experience in the medical industry and the medical applications we serve, we do have much more data that we have uh, in, in, in our notes and from a technical perspective that we can share depending on the specific requirement, I would say. So we probably need from this person a little bit more detail on um, the specific end application. You want to add something something to that, Aparajita? No, I, I completely agree with you, Christoph, and I just wanted to add that we, we have a lot of data for different uh, end applications, uh, right? Like for medical film, medical stopper, medical tubing, and um, we have, um, more data than what we showed in this presentation. And as Christoph mentioned, uh, we can provide you or have a discussion with you um, uh, offline uh, if you contact us via email. Uh, I think that would be the right way to proceed. Okay, thank you. I think we're coming towards the end, uh, and there are some questions that unfortunately we have not uh, been able to address due to the time frame. Uh, I believe we have a hard stop uh, in one minute, so I want to take the opportunity to thank everybody for making the time available to attend this uh, web, web event. If you have any other questions, please contact the contact details that are still on the screen. And for the people that were not able to get an answer to the question that they asked in the Q&A session, uh, be sure that we follow up with you directly and to address any other questions.